I've been uh, reading that book, The Devourer Below, still reading it. A uh, very good book. <clears throat> very, very good book. Actually, well beyond my expectations. I thought it was going to be <sighs> mediocre at best, and it's actually turned out to be some very well-told stories. Um, <clears throat> but I do. there is a, a weakness uh, in this, as there is, you know, in every story you're ever going to read. And for a horror book, uh, the authors, I think, I don't know if they're encouraged to do this by the editor, editors or, or whatever the case is, but I have noticed that they keep using similar language. <clears throat> and this key component to horror that is often ignored and really just never thought about um, is not present if you use certain words to describe things, okay? Um, and in this particular case, the narrators, not the characters, the narrators use the word like cultist a lot. The, the word cultist is a summary that takes every idea of what a cultist is and say, yeah, you know, a cultist, you know? Those guys, that's what these are. Or probably the most egregious error in the book is the word monster is used a lot. Every time I read that, I just take the book and put it down and go, why don't use the word monster in a horror story? Now, am I being, you know, censorious, as Jeremy likes to use from the quartering? <laughs> he suffered constantly. Um, no, it's just that um, <clears throat> it's that there's certain words that, oh, I'm dealing with a monster. I'm dealing with a cultist. How's that scary? How's that fostering any form of horror? It's not fostering horror. In fact, horror rather. Uh, in fact, it's doing the opposite. It's it's making your audience ears dull or their eyes dull. Okay. The key component, or a key component, I should say, because I'm sure there are more, but a key component to horror is curiosity. You need to be your audience needs to be curious, and you don't foster curiosity by summoning up whatever it is you're trying to deliver them or pointing out, hey, there's going to be a monster, right? You don't want them to know. You want them to be curious. And when you make your audience curious, you basically suck them in. Even if it's not a good story, let's say it's not a good horror story. Let's say it doesn't scare anyone. Say in the end, is there's no horror to it at all. But you made them curious, and they got personal investment, okay? They're still gonna like what they saw. So what you need is for the people who are engaged with your story uh, to be invested, okay? They have to be invested and you do that with curiosity. You have to pull them in. And once you pull them in, it's much easier, I think, to actually get some horror out of, out of your story. Um, the other day I was riding home and I live in an area that's very hilly and there's no traffic when I'm on my way home for many, many miles at that time of night. It's like 4 a.m. And it got very foggy. And if you turn on your brights, you can't see. You don't have your brights on, you can't see. So you become very, very focused. Like I'm just like focused. I'm just looking, you know, watching the road, watching it, that little bit of light that's on the road. And all of a sudden, out of the blue comes two eyes illuminated by the headlights just right there in my windshield. It was a deer. It scared the heck out of me. Was, what happened? It just, I was so focused and so invested. You see what I'm saying? I was trying to get home, so I was just so into it. Anything out of the ordinary would have scared the heck out of me. Now, I'm not arguing for jump scares. Good monsters, creepy dialogue, um, um, horror movies, things, half-naked women are, are really important. Uh, jump scares, that's not, those things by themselves are, are just not enough. If, those, if your whole story hinges on that, you're just, you're out of luck. It's not going to be any good. What I was arguing for here isn't a jump scare. What I argue for here is I was so, I was wanting to get home. It was one of those nights I just wanted to get home and I was just going way too fast in this fog. I know the road like back my hand, so, you know, I wasn't scared of going too fast even in the fog. 
and just out of the blue. I kind of, it's one of those scares you get done, you kind of laugh. You're like, oh, that's great, you know. Um, so I'm going to give you an example from a TV show, okay? Got no dog, but I got my coffee, okay? This example from a TV show. You are drinking coffee while you watch this, right? I hope so. Take another drink here. Together, all right? Should be drinking coffee while you watch these things. I'm not going to name the show. I I might name it when I'm done. But it's it's very it's very different than what I've been reading in the book. Uh, because if you know the show, then you it won't be as interesting to you. So there's this small little town. It's in the middle of the mountains in the woods. Middle of nowhere. Very little town. And there was a murder. And it was a significant enough murder that the FBI was called in. They took one agent, told this agent to go there. So the agent goes into this little town and starts investigating the murder. And one day, this is a couple episodes into the show, he gets called in by the sheriff and says, we need to have a talk. He says, okay. And it's three, it's the sheriff, two other guys, and the FBI agent. And the sheriff looks at him and goes, you know, we have a nice little town here, don't we? And he goes, yeah. He's like, it's very different from the rest of the world. He's like, yeah. He goes, with that comes a price. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, yeah. See, he says, there's these old woods around us. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, there's something in those woods. Call it a force. Call it evil. I don't know what it's there, what it is out there. But we're here to fight it. He goes, we're here to fight it. Our fathers were here to fight it, and their fathers before them. And the FBI agent looks at him and goes, a secret society. <clears throat> a secret society that was designed organically to deal with an evil in the woods. Are you curious? Because I sure as heck was. I, I want to know. And you're kind of at the same time, if you were there, you wouldn't want to go into those woods, right? You're like, there's an evil in the woods and these are lawmen, you know, and, and they're, they're scared what's in these woods. I mean, but you got to know. So you see what I'm saying? You got to know what's in the woods. Notice he didn't say, see, there's monsters out there in the woods. I, I, I already know what to expect. Or what if instead of a secret society, um, it was a cult, you know? You know, it, by the way, when Lovecraft, when, when he had a society, he didn't call them a cult. He may have it in summary or something, but like he had the esoteric order of Dagon. So like if you want to have a cult in a story, instead of calling them a cult, you call them the order or something. The order. Why do they call the order? What are they ordered around? I got to know, right? So this secret society in this story is ordered around these woods and some evil that's out there in the woods that they've known about for years. So you're not going to just, now here's where it gets interesting. You're not just going to find out about the, these woods and this evil by going into the woods. You're going to find out about it through the history of the secret society and their activities. It's really interesting. Makes you very curious. And they, just, they had me. I was gripped. That is good horror. Name of that television show is Twin Peaks. Uh, if you've not seen Twin Peaks, uh, you're, it is older. So it's starting to age a little bit, I think. It's aging well, but it is older. But season one of Twin Peaks is the best television season. Of, it's only eight episodes. The pilot and the season one is some of the best TV I've ever seen in my life. It is the best TV I've ever seen in my life. No show even comes close. So good. And because of stuff like that, they just don't ever tell you anything you have to stick around and figure it out for yourself and that pays big dividends in a story so next time you're writing you're reading a book or you're watching a movie and and they use words that that douse your curiosity that just doesn't make you curious anymore i think you can safely say you're probably not going to get a whole good horror story out of that one last example because i think it's so interesting comes from the, the movie The Shining. If you watch closely, 
the the movie starts when they're in the the hotel. Spoilers here, by the way, if you haven't seen it. The camera will go down and then take a corner. No reason, right? Just takes a corner. You get a POV, right? Point of view. Goes around the corner. (sighs) Keeps doing that. And at some point, it shows the kid on his big wheel. If you don't know what a big wheel is, look it up. It's the kids rode these things back then. I had one when I was a kid. And he's just going through, and every time he takes a corner, the camera just swoops around the corner, you know, with him, right behind him. And it does this for the first, not whole movie, but there's, it's not scary. It's just something that you see. Then all of a sudden, he's taking this corner, and those two little girls are standing there. And you're going, oh, wow. It's it's very creepy. Notice he just didn't have two girls standing there. That's not creepy. I, I people like, little girls are creepy. No, I'm not just standing there. It's not creepy. He had set you up for it. You see, he sucked you in. He got you thinking. Yeah, this is, you did, your, your, your mind, your psychology was, that's the way this, that's the way we see the hotel. It's just like a first person that goes to the hotel. Now, what's all that hinting to? All that is hinting to the maze that's in the backyard when you go through a maze what happens you keep going around the corner so when you so why is that important it's important because uh jack nicholson's character is going to be chasing him through the maze and it's giving the idea that around the corner can be anything all right much better than having some old man you know sweeping the halls and going there's two little sisters that were murdered here 40 years ago and they hide around the corner stupid Right? So those are the elements that you look for in a good horror. All right, I've talked way too long. I didn't mean to talk this long. I just think it's really interesting that curiosity is a big part of horror. <laughs> I hope you found it as interesting as me. If you haven't drank coffee, shame on you. Go get a cup. <laughs>